amazing. I'll show you now how it works. You have basically a black screen and everything that is green. Welcome to reality. This is how a studio from a 100% freelancer looks. My name is Paul and this is one reason to get the Atomos Shinobi monitor or to get a monitor in general. Let me show you one of the best features in my opinion in the Atomos Shinobi monitor. It's not a sponsored video or anything. I purchased that thing new for like 400 euro or something, 430 euro or something, I don't know. And I show you now the best feature in this. Mm -hmm. So that's the Lumix S1H and that is the Atomos Shinobi monitor on top of that. It's in reverse, I know, but that's because the cable is here better. I made a several uh, extra YouTube video about my rig. I showed you in a later video. So when you on set and you want to focus something, sure, you can use autofocus. This camera has a very good autofocus. Lumix S1H autofocus is amazing, in my opinion. You can work with it, but I use anyway a lot of manual focus. And when you want to use manual focus, you have the possibility to make the little um, zoom mechanism in here that you can also change the direction. You want to then zoom maybe on the microphone there, but you doesn't really see if is if this now in focus. Is it not in focus? Is it correct in focus or whatever? You have in the Shinobi monitor the possibility to press this button. This button is focus peaking. And this focus peaking mechanism is amazing. I'll show you now how it works. You have basically a black screen and everything that is green is in focus. So you change then the focus and you see, oh, voila, there is a microphone. At first, it doesn't look so right or what it is. I'll show you in a minute. You press this icon on the right corner here, these three yellow things. And that's the normal version. You have then the focus peaking mechanism. You see here, the basically the focus transition and you see everything where it's a green outline is in focus. However, you can also change the green outline to a red one, to a yellow one, to a green one, to a blue one and so on. The best is to choose something that is far on the other spectrum what you want to film. For instance, when you film orange uh, skin of people, you want to focus something on the skin, you use green because that's on the other side of the color scale from a orange skin. You can also then use it when the camera is running. Um, you have maybe here the focus assist um, where the camera crops in and focus a little bit better. This little focus peaking point, let me change it. That's the manual focus magnification. That's picture in picture. You can set it to full. You can also set it to off. AF modus off. When I now press this ring, I have this then in 100% magnification and I can even better use focus. But that's also not the yellow from the egg. That's not the best way to do it. You have here basically the green outlines without the focus magnification. You use this when you want to have complete control over the shot, when you want to see the whole image, because when you film, that becomes very annoying. Now you can do one thing. If you want to have only the thing in focus in visual, then you go on this button here and then you press this button. Now the screen is black and that's amazing because you only see what is in focus. You even then can turn off every uh, scales and every um, every measurements in the lens and then you only see what is in focus and that's very handy in my opinion because when you have particularly something that is moving you can use the focus system here very good because when you don't use this I turn it off you for a second now tell me what is in focus I mean you see a little bit okay now is the monitor a little bit in focus the background is it really in focus and you fiddle it around back and forth but when you turn this then on you see exactly okay now is the background in focus now is the foreground in focus and so on and for me is that really the number one thing why i use a monitor i recently discovered it when i had a little shoot in a fashion studio we shot some fashion brand stuff and thing and um that was that was eye-opening for me. And by the way, I'm printing pictures right now. I have um, here a little collection of pictures of me and some trips. And here are now my Passepartout frames. And that's my first picture. I printed it in um, one on White Wall. That's a printing company. It's also here in Berlin. And I printed a picture. Turned out good, but um, when you have a nice color grading monitor and you 
sharpen the picture perfectly and everything, then you don't use the artificial resharpening from white wall that um, kind of destroys the image. It doesn't, doesn't really destroy it, but it looks not so good. And here I want them to um, put some other pictures in the frame. The, the reason I have here six frames is because I was in the last years on six major nice vacations and I want to have a nice picture from every vacation in the frame here and on the other side behind me will then be um, smaller pictures from this vacation because that looks like a that looks really nice like a little gallery here or something so and uh, now you see this maybe then in the next video I'm on my way to uh, Magix basically I'm meeting I have now a little meeting with the brand manager of the company Magix, right? Magix, where I uh, edit all my stuff on. Uh, here, that's my that's my professional editing setup, <laughs> all black. Um, I have now a meeting with Magix. See you in the next video. Right now, we'll, we'll make sure that you don't get uh, into the lab. Yeah, into the, into the secret Magix lab. Yeah.